Howdy, howdy. So I just uh, survived a massive, massive uh, downpour. And uh, yeah, it's given me a lot, of, uh, a lot of time to play with some boy inside. So you guys are the proud benefactors of DC's biblical weather. So to start off, i um, been playing a whole lot with, uh, with the whole Udistall idea, which of course is just uh, doing either a bottom or a top stall in wall plane, and then using it to switch into this kind of horizontal plane stall, which really is bringing the poi to a stall on either side of your body so that the poi is leading your hand. And when it does that, you've got a second to pull it out in whatever direction you see fit, be it up or down, right? And I've been actually playing a lot with transitioning between top and bottom stalls in this framework. And noticing how freaking cool it is to switch between the two. trying to ignore the fact that uh, I'm burning small holes in my feet doing all the uh, pirouettes necessary. So, um, after playing with that a copious amount, I realized that you don't actually have to do the upstall or downstall to get into this. Any motion in which the poise stops horizontally is fair game, which means floats start to end the picture. And float, at least the type that I'm talking about, for those of you who are unfamiliar, and come to think of it actually, like the down float could be used in much the same way, although it would be much more difficult. Anyway, the types of floats I'm talking about are the types where the hand rises with the poi at equal speed, right? You can get to them out of isolations or static spin or extension, right? So, if we instead start trying U stalls out of floats, we find all kinds of other fun things that come out of it. Um, this actually is a variation on the idea of pendulum stalls. from static spin, oops, from 
isolations. From cat eyes, and from hybrids. And of course, when you're coming out, uh, we intend to go into the hybrid coming out of this. Um, the point where they're frozen out, both of your hands drop into it, right? So from here to here. And I know this looks peculiar, but trust me, it's, uh, it, it works out unbelievably easy. checked out um, the video response to my post last week from Night and Day Dance, which I recommend each and every one of you go watch it because it is chock full of all kinds of body mechanics things that uh, most of us voice never can ever even think about. But um, it got me thinking about a uh, performance class I took in college, and specifically the idea that um, asymmetry was a good thing for a performer to strive to uh, to get to in their performances, namely because it adds an element of danger to uh, the performance in which the audience is wondering if you're going to fall over on your ass. Um, specifically, when he was talking about lunges, so for example, if you're going opposites, you can lunge in either direction, or I realized you can isolate the motion the direction. Like so. And uh, the funky opportunities that uh, come out of that, if, say, this, this actually reminded me of Balinese dancing, where, you know, performers very deliberately seem you know, kind of teetering on the edge the entire time. And uh, especially when I started playing with that, going the same direction, uh, anti-spin flowers, I came across that, this bit of funkiness. And uh, I really like how it makes your entire body feel like it's floating for a second toy, right? The fact that the poi seem to float for a second when they're coming out of this just helps out with that a lot. But uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of cool possibilities for that, honestly. For example, you can use that to turn if you wrap one foot over the other and you stall out of it. You can then bring yourself back out going the other direction. Like so. Anyway, um, some fun silly stuff with my feet. Challenge all of you out there to uh, go practice such things yourselves. Send me videos. Because I need a lot of ideas in that department. Anyway, so uh, that is this week in a nutshell. Thank you guys for watching.